experiencing God, unit four, love and God's invitation. Day one, know God. Bible verse, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. John 14, 21. God is provider. A mission pastor was convinced God had called him to Canada. The receiving church had no money to pay him a salary or moving expenses, but they prayed and believed God to provide. God moved in the heart of people who obeyed to provide the finances needed. The call to relationship is also a call to be on mission with him. By responding to his invitation to love him wholeheartedly, he will reveal his will. Never be satisfied with merely knowing about God. Knowing God comes only through experiencing him as he reveals himself. When Moses asked God for his name, God responded, I am who I am. God was saying, I am everything you will need. Moses came to know God experientially as Jehovah or Yahweh, the great I am. See Exodus 3.13. The scriptures are a record of God's revelation of himself to people. Each name for God is a part of that revelation. We see names or titles for God following an event in which God revealed himself to people by experience to disclose a new name to them or describe himself in a new way. To a Hebrew, a person's name represented his character and described his nature. Read Exodus 17, 8 through 15 to learn how the Lord is my banner. In Genesis 22, 1 through 18, God was in the process of developing Abraham's character to be a father of a nation. Abraham's faith and obedience for God as provider were tested. Provision was made by the great I Am. Page 72 lists names, titles, and descriptions of God. Some of them include God as our Savior, Refuge and Strength, Good Shepherd, Comforter, strong deliverer, sure foundation, bread of life, friend, redeemer, hiding place. Can you say you know God more intimately as he reveals himself through experiences? In what ways has God revealed himself to you? And what does God want you to do in response to today's study? Shalom, shalom. Experiencing God, Unit 4, Day 2, Worship God. Bible verse, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him as show myself to him. John 14, 21. Acknowledging God's name amounts to recognizing who God is. To worship is to reverence and honor God and acknowledge him as worthy of praise. God's name is majestic and worthy of praise. Calling on his name is seeking his presence. Praising his name is praising him. Pages 73 and 74 provide scripture and ways to help you direct worship. Some ways may include to bless, glorify, and praise his name, glory and rejoice in his name, call on his name, hope in his name, remember the name, know, declare, and fear his name, lift up hands in his name, sing praises, give thanks to his name, love, sing, and trust his name. Choose to worship him today. Make it a meaningful time to experience your love relationship with the Lord. Praise him for who he is, for what he has done. Glorify, love, seek, trust, and adore him. Sing to him. I've chosen Psalm 52, 9, and it goes like this. I will praise you forever for what you have done. In your name, I will hope for your name is good. Psalm 63, 5 says, My soul is satisfied in the Lord, as with fat and rich food. What does God want you to do in response to today's study? Rejoice in the Lord always. Experiencing God, Unit 4, Day 3, Love God. Bible verse, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. John 14, 21. 
God initiates and pursues a love relationship, not a one-sided affair. He wants us to know, worship, and love Him. To love God is to obey Him. Obedience is the outward expression of love for God. Jesus obeyed every command of the Father. If you have an obedience problem, you have a love problem. God always expresses His perfect love and His will is always the best. His nature is love and He cannot function contrary to His nature. He will bring discipline, judgment, and wrath on those who continue in sin and rebellion. His discipline is always based on love. See Hebrews 12, 6, John 3, 16, and 1 John 3, 16. God is love, 1 John 4, 16. His love is perfect. Total trust in God's love is crucial. Everything we do is determined by our relationship with God. It is spiritually impossible to believe one way and practice another. Because God loves us perfectly, He can be trusted and obeyed completely. God is omnipotent and omniscient. He is all-powerful and all-knowing. He created the world from nothing. He will accomplish everything He proposes. Let God be God. Respond to God in childlike faith to begin to know Him. Believe that what He is doing is best. Your life will be fulfilling. You will know purpose. God always fills our life with Himself. When you have Him, you have God at your side. God's commands are expressions of His love nature. Deuteronomy 10, 12-13 declares that God's commands are for our good. Because He loves us, He has given us guidelines for living, so we will not miss the full dimension of the love relationship. God does not want to see us miss His best, and He does not want our life destroyed by foolish choices. God wants us to receive life and have it abundantly to free us, not restrict us. God's commands are designed, are designed to guide us to life's best. As God reveals Himself, we will come to know and love Him. As we love Him, we will believe and trust Him. And as we believe and trust Him, we will obey Him. Do not let bitter circumstances take your eyes off God's love for you. What does God want you to do in response to today's study? Experiencing God, Unit 4, Day 4, God invites you to join Him. Bible verse, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. John 14, 21. Reality 3, when you see the Father at work around you, that is your invitation to adjust your life to him and join him in that work. The Bible is the record of God's activity in the world where he reveals himself, his nature, his purposes and plans and his ways. It focuses on the activity of God in his relationship with individuals. God has always been involved in the world. The Bible reveals God's redemptive activity in the world. When God is about to do something, he takes the initiative and comes to one or more of his servants to let them know what he is about to do. He invites them to adjust their lives to him so he will accomplish his work through them. The sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants and prophets. See Amos 3 7. John 5 17, 19 through 20, is Jesus' example of being involved. He announced he had come not to do his own will, but the will of the Father who had sent him. To know the Father's will, Jesus said he watched to see what the Father was doing. Then Jesus joined him in that work. See John 4, 34, 5, 3, 6, 38, 8, 29, and 17, 4. The key word is watch. Jesus watched to see where the Father was at work. Then he did what he saw the Father doing. Two factors are important for you to recognize God's activity around you. You must live in an intimate love relationship with God. God must take the initiative to open your spiritual eyes so you can see what He is doing. Always begin with prayer and watch to see where God is already working. God is already at work bringing a lost world to Himself. 
He will show us where He is at work when we adjust our lives to Him in a love relationship. His revelation is our invitation to become involved. When we join Him, He completes His work through us. Read how God used ordinary individuals like Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus' disciples to accomplish His purposes. What does God want you to do in response to today's study? Shalom, shalom. Experiencing God, Unit 4, Day 5. Knowing where God is at work. Bible verse, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. John 14, 21. What God initiates, he completes. A tender, sensitive heart will be ready to respond to God at the slightest prompting. God makes your heart tender and sensitive in the love relationship, so you are in tune with what is on His heart for the circumstances around you. No one seeks God or pursues spiritual things unless the Spirit of God is at work in their life. God is working when a neighbor, a friend, or our children begin to inquire about spiritual things. God is drawing them. The harvest field is within the crowd, not the crowd. Jesus always looked to where the Father was at work. Jesus noticed Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see him. Salvation came to that household. See Luke 19.5. When you become a Christian, you enter a love relationship with Jesus Christ, God himself. At that point, the counselor, the spirit of truth, takes up residence in your life. He is always present to teach you. Only God can draw people to himself, cause people to seek him, reveal spiritual truth, convict the world of guilt about sin, convict the world of righteousness and of judgment. When you see one of these things happening, you know God is at work. Pray. Then make the connection of what happens next. Find out what God is already doing by asking probing questions. Then listen. God may be drawing someone to himself, causing the person to seek him or bring in conviction of sin. Be ready to make adjustments in your life to join God. Frequently, we do not join God because we are not committed. We want God to bless us and to work through us. Look for ways God is going to reveal himself by working through and beyond us to accomplish his purposes. When God speaks, he guarantees it will happen. A true prophet of God is someone who has a word from the Lord that comes to pass. God's nature demands it. Whatever God says inevitably occurs. What does God want you to do in response to today's study? Shalom, Experiencing Shalom. God, week four. We express our love to God by obeying his commands. The love of the Father in Jesus is ours, and Jesus will reveal himself to us. The call to a relationship is a call to be on mission with God. By responding to his invitation to love him wholeheartedly, he will reveal his will. Obedience is the outward expression of love for God. We must live in an intimate love relationship with God, and God must take the initiative to open our spiritual eyes so we can see what he is doing. God makes our heart tender and sensitive in the love relationship, so we are in tune with what is on His heart for the circumstances around us. Everything we do is determined by our relationship with God. It is spiritually impossible to believe one way and practice another. Never be satisfied with merely knowing about God. Knowing God comes only through experiencing Him as He reveals Himself. When we become a Christian, we enter a love relationship with Jesus Christ, God himself. At that point, the counselor, the spirit of truth, takes up residence in our life to teach us all things. Because he loves us, he has given us guidelines for living so we will not miss the full dimension of the love relationship. God does not want us to miss his best and does not want our lives destroyed by foolish choices. His commands are designed to guide us in life's best. As God reveals himself, we will come to know and love him. 
As we love Him, we will believe and trust Him. As we believe and trust Him, we will obey Him. An obedience problem is a love problem. Total trust in God's love is crucial. God always expresses His perfect love and His will is always the best. His nature is love. He will bring discipline, judgment, and wrath on those who continue in sin and rebellion. His discipline is always based on love. Because God loves us perfectly, He will accomplish everything He purposes. Let God be God. Respond to Him in childlike faith to begin to know Him. Believe that what He is doing is best. Your life will be fulfilling. You will know purpose. God fills our life with Himself. When you have Him, you have God at your side. When God speaks, He guarantees it will happen. A true prophet of God is someone who has a word from the Lord that comes to pass. God's nature demands it. Whatever God says inevitably occurs. To worship is to reverence and honor God and acknowledge Him as worthy of praise. Seek His presence. Praise His majestic holy name, for He is worthy of praise.